and welcome. My name is Doug Robinson, and I'm here today with uh, Hudson resident and Board of Selectmen candidate Tom Scotty, who will be running for the Board of Selectmen this coming March 12th. We thought we'd take this opportunity to share with you a little bit more about who Tom is and why he's running for the Board of Selectmen. Hi, Tom. How you doing? <laughs> good, good. Good to be here. Thank, Thank you, you for, for coming in and, and spending the time with us here in the studio. So. We can let the uh, residents of Hudson know just a little bit more about you and where you come from and what your goals and visions and dreams are for the town of Hudson. Uh, how about a little bit of background on you for those who don't know you? All right. Well, uh, I grew up in uh, not far from here in Pepperell, Mass, a uh, town a little bit smaller than this. Uh, I'm the youngest of five. Um, Mom and Dad raised me out there, and after I graduated North Middlesex, went to uh, UMass Lowell, wound up here in Hudson as a police officer been serving the community ever since uh, 2003. I guess. That was what 15 years ago if I remember when I was I was there for your uh, swearing in ceremony were, back then. You definitely were. You look pretty much the same way you do now with a haircut and everything. Just and a little grayer now. A little grayer now. A little now. grayer. Getting the wrinkles too. Well you've had a great run in the town of Hudson with the uh, um, a police department and you have a family of course. Oh yeah yeah I, I have uh, four beautiful children two girls two boys and my wife Christy. And they keep you busy, huh? Extremely busy. Extremely my busy. boys are little and my girls are, are, uh, are big and out, off in college. So two different sets of, okay. uh, of issues and, okay. and whatnot. So let's go back to your, your college days. What were your studies involving? Uh, it was uh, criminal justice. Um, I, I uh, graduated with a uh, bachelor's degree and then a master's degree from UMass Lowell. Uh, my master's I got a couple years ago. And uh, that was in uh, a master's of arts in criminal, uh, criminology with two uh, certificates, one in leadership and policy development, and the others in forensic okay. criminology. Okay. And that led you, obviously, to being on the executive board um, for the Policemen's Association at, that at the actually, police department. That happened uh, prior to my master's degree. Um, we, um, we, as a group at the police, uh, well, in the patrolman's union, uh, were represented by uh, AFSCME, and we weren't satisfied mm. with their, uh, their level of service, so uh, we right. decided to, to break off and form our own okay. union. And um, I was there from the, the beginning and helped uh, get it off the ground. So you learn a lot about policy and, and procedures and about oh, litigation yeah. and... Yes. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> Lots. Yeah, I mean, it was a fantastic experience. It was actually kind of, um, you know, a little surreal because we had our last union meeting um, last month. Well, my last union meeting. And right. I was actually sitting in the back where, and they elected okay. my, uh, my replacement, so... So you last year, so you'll be leaving the Hudson Police Department. That is correct, yes. Oh, sad times for Hudson, losing Officer Tom Scotty. Yeah. Wow. Moving on. Moving on. Not far, though. I'm only going to Litchfield. You're going so. to Litchfield. Yes. And you're still going to be residing in Hudson. Correct, this yeah. This is going to leave you the, the time that you need to do this job, which is not just one, one day a week. No, and that's, that's every the... Other every other week so to speak and that's the the beauty of you know having worked in the town for for such a long time is I've, I've gotten to know how the different um, right. you know the different boards and the different mm -hmm. um, um, facets of the town work and I've seen you know selectmen it's a, a you know a, a, a constant job they're fielding phone calls at all hours right. of the night and dealing with different yeah. issues throughout uh, town that's true when I you when know. I was as you know on the board 12 years ago 15 years ago it was uh, four nights a week were meetings, yeah. that's on average, and then uh, you'd have the weekend activities and you'd have uh, the, uh, the meetings. You know, every other Tuesday or three out of four Tuesdays a month, you'd, you'd have those meetings. But it, it's great that you're able to bring a, a fresh set of eyes uh, to the town with the breadth of your experiences. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? So, I mean, you know, being a, a police officer kind of gave me a lot of... Uh, life experience and experience dealing with lots of different issues um, and, and you know having to, to manage people really because that's what it is, is is dealing with people and you're dealing with people at their worst sometimes and sometimes you're dealing with you know just your average you know everyday normal people and interacting with them and you know having sometimes you get you got to solve people's problems it's it's not all about putting people in handcuffs and dragging them away to jail you know a lot of times people call us to solve their problems and, and deal with their issues and you got to come up with sometimes creative solutions to make, you know, both parties happy or, you know, mm -hmm. so. You know, and, and as, you know, being the detective sergeant supervisor of the detectives, mm. you're the num number one detective for the town of Hudson. 
And that's a job I imagine you have to really foster relationships across oh, the board yes. with everybody. Absolutely. So, you know, there's so many moving parts to detectives because they deal with the felony level investigations. So you have to deal with the county attorneys. You get to deal with other agencies because a lot of times these crimes are, are um, you know, multi-jurisdictional or, or they cross state lines. And you got to, you know, you got to you got to be on speaking terms with a lot of other departments, not just speaking terms. You got to be able to pick up the phone and you know, work together to, to, you know, to get the bad guys, so. So it's all about building bridges. Exactly. It's all about communication. Correct. It's all about developing a plan for the goal. Yes. Not necessarily to get the bad guys, so it's a win-win-win for everybody, exactly. as we say. To develop the best course of action to solve the problem at hand, so to speak. Let's talk a minute about budgeting. Selectmen spend a lot of their time, in fact, the entire fall, on budgeting with all the d departments in the town. Mm -hmm. Um, how was that a transferable skill from what you did in the police department? So with us, we have to do, obviously, being the supervisor and detectives, we have to acquire um, gear or, or mm -hmm. training or, or, you know, anything really for our guys. We have to go through a certain process because of budgeting on our end as well. Right. So we have to be cognizant of, um, you know, like there's money in the training budget. So, you know, we have a training committee meeting. So we have those every month where whatever training we want to uh, bring to the mm -hmm. table, we have to present it and we have to be able to justify why we want to get it and why it's necessary for the department, for, the, for this mm -hmm. person to have this training. Right. You know, so it's, it's similar in nature as being able to evaluate and, and prioritize what needs, to, what needs to get done. And in some cases, come up with creative solutions to get um, grants or, or mm -hmm. um, you know, in some circumstances, we've been able to obtain free training right. or free items. Right. So I remember that as a selectman, we would uh, really appreciate those grants when they came in, whether it be Absolutely. for new vests or for, or for new guns or, mm -hmm. or for, for what it, it may be. And the long-term relationships with, with, with the vehicles to get the best deal on them. So there, there would be a lot of transferable skills as in your previous role to this. Uh, you and I have worked together a lot in the last uh, 15 years. You've been a, a good partner of the paper and a good partner of mine. And recently, you and I uh, collaborated on the opioid yes. case that was in the paper. In uh, 17 years I've been with the paper, that, that one story probably generated more um, concern, information, and comments than, than any other story that I've ever written for the, for the paper. Let's talk about the opioid. And, uh, problem in Hudson right now, and how as you as, as a member of, you know, of the board could help those residents that you know, have problems right now? Well, I think, you know, with, it's a very, very complex problem. There's no easy fix to it. There's no easy solution to it. But I think there are things that, um, you know, that we can do to, to help obviously mitigate it and, and help combat it. You know, and, and we've talked about this before. You know, I think it takes a three-prong approach to, to attack it. And, you know, it's, it's education, it's enforcement, and treatment. You need to have a balance between all three. And, and by education, it's, it's not, ed no, not dare, not educating you about what drugs are and stuff. Right. It can be to a point. But some of the services out there that the police department provides, so like the drug take back initiative. So we have the natty box, as we call it. It's like a big mailbox that's in the, uh, the lobby of the police department and where you can take any and all of your unwanted or unused uh, prescription medications in, as long as they're not liquids and um, you can put them in there and they get brought up to uh, an incinerator and burned. No questions asked. You know, we're not looking at the labels or anything like that, but you know, that keeps, that keeps your medicine cabinet empty, which means your kids are less likely mm -hmm. to go in there and, and start pillaging. And that's their, a major problem right yes. there. Kids go to the, the cabinet in the bathroom and Correct. help themselves or... Yeah. And that, that's your kids will have somebody over the house and they'll go to the bathroom. And so it's, that's a big concern right there. Yeah. And that's something that not many people think about, you know, is, is, oh, I got these unused ones, you know, the people leave them in there for years or they, they throw them in the trash. And next thing you know, somebody's sure. fishing them out or whatever, um, you know, so you have that part of it. Um, obviously the enforcement is, you know, targeting the, the drug dealers and, and, and that's for the police department to do, obviously. And, right. You know, making sure okay. that they're, they're adequately staffed and, and, and all that jazz. But, um, you know, and then there's um, treatment and the treatment portion of it, 
you know, is just making sure that we partner and foster the relationships mm -hmm. with other places, you know, mm -hmm. so that we can provide the services. So, mm -hmm. like, you know, we have safe stations in Nashua and Manchester. That's one of my questions. Are you a believer in the safe station program? Yes, absolutely. That would be something a, that you'd work with the fire chief on. Well, I mean, I think we're, we're so close to Nashua, it's just a matter of getting the information out there, educating people on this is a service that's out there. You know, there's mm -hmm. sober houses in town where, um, where we can refer people. And, and take whatnot. a second and explain what a safe station is. I'm, I'm very familiar with the program. Yep. Just so, to take a second and, and what, that, what that program does for folks who need help. So the safe stations program gets, um, takes you, people who are in crisis who, who f you know, feel like they're going to relapse or if they're using and they want to stop using, they'll, they'll take them in, they evaluate them, and they help to get them placed into a bed, into a, uh, a detox program. And then from there, they'll, they'll, they may or may not get vetted out to another okay. uh, program. And the, and the program's working. From yes. the details that I saw it and is. the information that I received from the chief, it's a, it's a great program that is. is working for, for many, many people. And if I remember correctly, I think in the month of November, over 300 residents or people from the town of Hudson went to the Nashua Safe Station for help. So yeah. there is a need in Hudson for it. Definitely. Absolutely. And that's something you, you could really make happen. And, I'd like to segue now to a topic that I was sitting here thinking. All those times you've sat in that cruiser, driving the streets of Hudson in 15 years, 2,000 hours mm -hmm. a year, you have spent more than 30,000 hours of your time in a car on oh. Hudson Roads. That's a long time. <laughs> That's a long time. It's a real long time. Have we got congestion out there? Yes, absolutely. What do you I've... think we could do about that? I mean, I don't think there's any quick, easy, cheap solution, so to speak, to do it, what everybody is, I'm sure, hoping for. Um, you know, do I think the circumferential highway is the answer to that? I, I, don't, uh, I don't necessarily believe that um, that is the answer to what, what ails us. But, you know, um, I think, you know, looking at having um, traffic engineers come in and, and take a peek at what we have, the existing infrastructure, and how to best mm -hmm. utilize that infrastructure, you know, mm -hmm. perhaps adding an intersection here or there, and, or in, not adding, but adding on to existing intersections here and there might be a solution. But again, I'm no traffic engineer by sure. any stretch of the imagination, but I think, you know, talking to somebody who, who does that for a living, you know, is obviously a good idea and, and to try to come up with a, a, a cost-efficient solution mm -hmm. to mitigate it. Which, which would lead us to green spaces and natural areas in our town that, that could be developed. Um, what, what's your feeling about green space and, and these natural areas? Well, I think the, the part of the reason why that I moved here, I can tell you, is it reminded me of home. All right, and I don't know if you're familiar with Pepperell at all, but yes, I am. It, it's beautiful. Where I grew up, there was conservation land behind me. There was conservation land <laughs> behind acro the houses okay. across the street. I mean, it's just loaded yeah. with it. And it. It's absolutely gorgeous. Lots mm -hmm. of wildlife, you know. And, and um, I, I think that's what makes Hudson. Hudson, mm -hmm. really, when you look at what's mm -hmm. going in around us, you look at Londonderry, okay. they're building that massive downtown in where Max Apples used to be. Uh -huh. um, Nashua's yeah. being developed like crazy. Manchester, it's kind of happening all, yeah. all around us. Yeah. And I think, you know, part of what makes Hudson, Hudson is the fact that it has a lot of, yeah. uh, you know, open area, yeah. open space. And the problem comes down to how do you balance it? Correct. You know, how do you pay for it? Uh, which bucket does this, this come out of? Absolutely. And that's, that's the name of the game is where you have to build those bridges again yes. to uh, create foundations where everybody's going the same way at the same time. Correct. I think you have to find the balance between, you know, like I said, this area is growing pretty rapidly. You know, right. the, the area is being developed like, like at an unprecedented rate. I mean, uh, London area is the fastest growing community in the state. Really? Yes. So that's something to be cognizant of because it's our neighbor mm -hmm. to the north, sure. you know, northeast. But um, so it, that progress yeah. isn't far behind us. So it's getting ahead of that and figuring out, you know, okay. what kind of business, you know, do we want coming to town? Starting to think about where we want to, where, where it should be, where it should be located, what parcels of land, that type of thing. Kind of have a master plan. Exactly. For the town. You know, there was that 10-year plan that was mentioned in... Uh, the candidates night and correct it'd be good to look at that and see where where it is and wh what it entails does it entail our infrastructure does it entail you know preserving green space because i think that's a, an extremely important part of this because i'm not the only person that moved here because of the green space either and the last thing people want is you know a big business going in right behind their house or something correct yeah you know i wrote up the story on candidates night uh sunday 
and uh, listen to all the speeches of, for all the candidates and across both sides of, of, of the tables. And the one repeating theme seemed to be an uncertainty with either the candidates or their perception of the people in Hudson that they were unhappy with, this, with their leaders, that the feeling that there wasn't cooperation or understanding between the budget and the school and, and the uh, board of selectmen. How does one approach that? How, do, how does one dive into that to, to bring back Hudson together again, if that perception is real? But that comes, comes out loud and clear as, as you read each person's statement. Yeah, and it, it seems to be the theme of the night, I know, un, undoubtedly, you know. Uh, and it's, it's, it's also, you know, uh, evident in the fact that you, I mean, you have eight people running for the Board of Selectmen when there's only two spots. I mean, that's something that I've been around here 15 and a half years, and I've never seen anything like that before. So yeah, that definitely speaks volumes. But, you know, fostering relationships is, is not as difficult as people may think it is. It's, you know, it's taking the initiative to, to come up and say, hey, listen, Tom Scotty, nice to meet you. We're part of the you know, Board of Selectmen. I want to sit down with you and the, the school board and the budget committee, and we've got to you know, come up together with our 10-year plan. You set, a, you, know, you set your date mm -hmm. that's agreeable on all parties' terms, mm -hmm. and you, you just get it done. You know, the, the fact of, oh, I've made a phone call, and no one's called me back. Well, you've got to be the person that keeps at it. You have to be tenacious. Be the bigger person. Well, and you have to be tenacious. If, if, you know, if that's you know, one phone call doesn't work, all right, well, you know, sh all right, I'm going to keep calling, or I'm going to go, hey, I want to get sit, sit down and talk with you. we got to sit down and do this. You know, we got to iron this out. This is what's best for everybody. You know, so it's taking no for an answer sometimes isn't the answer. That's, that's correct. You know? Accepting the wall that yeah. comes up that they put there because of either the fear, their uncertainty, or their doubt of, of what's going on. And maybe that has a lot to do with this time of year, too, because, you know, two-fifths two of the board is about to change. Yeah. Do you think that makes people feel uncertain? Oh, definitely. You know, because the devil you know is sometimes, you know, different than the devil you don't know. That's absolutely so. correct. Absolutely correct. Well, I'm glad we've had this time to get to know each other. Good, good segue. Yeah. That wasn't planned. In yeah. the last minute or two, would, would you like to put it right to the camera? Sure. And... Uh, well, I, uh, I look forward to, uh, to hopefully continuing my, uh, my service to the, the town of Hudson um, as, a, as your selectman. Uh, just remember, I'm third down from the top, um, and uh, get out there and vote. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck to you.